Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome to Spa Francorchamps. This circuit was built in 1921, and even though its length was halved in 1979, the Belgian Grand Prix is still one of the longest, fastest, and most magical races on the F1 calendar. Spa Francorchamps is famous for its long straights and fast corners. Drag efficiency will make all the difference here as drivers zoom through the famous sequence of Eau Rouge leading up into Radion. But a twisty middle sector keeps things tricky down on the track. We're about halfway through the season now and there's still plenty of time for everything to change. All eyes are on the teams and how they tackle the rest of the year. Stay right here because we're just getting started.
Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, I guess he was muted. <laughs> Radio check, radio check. I've been talking for green however green. long we've been live. Yeah, it's green now. 15 minutes, <laughs> chatting away. All right, let's send our boys out. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very painful race for us. I can guarantee that. How you doing, Anthony? Good to see you. And hello, Farah. I'll say it again. You might actually hear me this time. Someone spun out. Okay, I'm just having a look at the leaderboard to see if anyone's running a reserve driver. Doesn't look like it. Car in the wall. Okay, Someone's come. crashed. And I think that's an Alpha Tower eight. We've had a crash. It's Yuki. Let's take a closer look. Now look at this. It was the Alpha Tower. He's locked involved. up and gone straight into the barriers. And that's an off, and a big off. Uh, so yeah, no one is running a reserve driver, and Alpha Tower might be regretting their decision to not take Yuki out of the car for the first session because he has just broken it. <laughs> So 16 laps is the amount of fuel we've got in the car. It's a little bit too much. If you look at the uh, the graph there, uh, that's going to take us pretty much to the half hour by the time we get back to the pits. So I think for future reference, 15 laps for Spa for a run. It is a very long lap. Longest on the grid, I think it's what, 4.2 kilometers? You've sacked um, Perez for Beerhoff. What's your okay. thoughts on coming in or that's an interesting off? choice of uh, replacement driver. Yes, you know, coming one two with those race bonuses are going to be expensive. You can always just renegotiate the contracts of the drivers. Maybe give them a slightly higher salary, but remove the race bonuses to compensate for the higher salary. Or the other way around, you know, remove their bonuses, give them a higher salary to compensate them for not having a bonus every race. You know, they'll usually accept. You can even change the length of their contract as well. You don't have to wait till their contract expires or is about to expire to renegotiate. You can renegotiate with anybody. You can renegotiate with Max. You know, at the start of a six-year contract and drop it down to two years. Although, you know, the smaller the contract, you know, the higher the wage you're going to have to pay them. All right, we have a 97% setup with Freddy. That's a really good start. And 89 with Felipe. Not quite so good. Now I tell you, I, I've mentioned this before. Um... We did it at the start of this season where we renegotiated. No, we didn't do it on this one. Oh, they've run wide. But I did talk about it. Because I talked about setting up uh, a Red Bull team where you didn't have Max in it. Where you could just um, you know, renegotiate his contract down to a one year deal on a higher salary uh, with a ridiculous race bonus and then just you know, replace him immediately. And that way the buyout fee is maybe 10 million as opposed to 50. Much easier to replace him that way. 
and then you can run a a, 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 a Red Bull youth driver in this place if you want to give yourself a more of a challenge with Red Bull. Someone like um, Duravalo or Hauger. Hell, you could even bring back Gasly or promote Sonoda. Or bring back Ricardo. That's what I've got on my Red Bull file. I've only done like two races with it, but I've got Ricardo and and, um, and Perez as my two drivers. And um, Verstappen has gone to McLaren, but he's only on a one-year deal with McLaren. Right, we're going to call our boys in. So we can make those tweaks that we need. Oliver, Beam, uh, Oliver Behrman, yeah, he's he's uh, he's not German, he's British. He will be a long way off the pace because he's a rookie. He starts at the game um, at age 16 with okay stats, but he gets better very quickly. Uh, he's the reserve driver I've got my Williams playthrough. And yeah, he's uh, very, very promising, young talent. He'll develop very quickly. But yeah, he's uh, he's British. He's currently in the Ferrari Young Driver program. Let's try that. In fact, let's try that. Nice result for you there, Anthony. Third and eighth in Holland. Always nice to get a lucky safety car. Another crash. Is it Yuki again? No, it is a McLaren. There's been a crash. We can take a look now. Daniel Ricardo involved here. Yeah, he's done exactly the same thing that Yuki did. Once you're done with the PS4, surely it's enough of a challenge to put you two youngsters in the Williams. Um, depends on how clever you are in car upgrades. If you're using Intense, you can still get a pretty strong car. I mean, don't forget that for most of the first season of Williams, uh, well, the first half of the first season of Williams, we had um, Albon and Porsche, and uh, we were upgrading smart. Um, but we were also doing good research in the following season. Once we had Gasly in instead of Albon, uh, along with Porsche, we had a car that could challenge right from the very beginning, and then we won both titles. So. Uh, yeah, removing the intents uh, in your car development will definitely give you a much more long-term project. I mean, look at look at my house file. My house file again. I developed strongly. I built my facilities wisely. Uh, did some really strong research, and at the start of season two. Um, replaced Schumacher with Alonso and the combination of him and Magnussen 
just meant dominant one twos. Do I rush my development? I rarely rush development. Generally, you know, if I'm in this series, obviously we're, we're just doing normal, but you know, intense has the same time frame as normal, just you get a lot more uh, expertise gain, a lot more. Um, and if you're putting a lot of hours into a part and using intense, you know, you're making very big gains. And the more expertise you gain with each part, the more of those parts you make, that the compounds and you get, you know, huge, huge gains with every subsequent part. We've just had a car run wide. Did somebody spin out there? Oh, we got to spin for Joe. Let's see what happened there. Let's take another look. There we have Joe. One thing I have started doing, because um, I pretty much always start my seasons exactly the same way. You know, uh, I look at what my budget's going like to be. Uh, any any playthrough I, I start now, you know, be it for this, for the channel, or um, just for my own playthrough. Uh, I, I always use the same challenge rules that we're using on this now. Um, and I almost always start my card development in exactly the same way, uh, even before using these challenge rules. And that was to immediately start um, a manufacturing job to build a second one of the starting suspension upgrades it gives you. So you have two. And then I put six engineers and all my hours into a new underfloor. And the remaining four hour, uh, four engineers and, and no hours into a optimized cooling focused uh, replacement suspension. And normally I would just let that go through at normal time, but now I've started rushing that one so that I've got a second new suspension. You know, well, you know, it, technically it's the third new suspension, the third suspension part, but the second new one for the team, um, and that's available for Jeddah. Now, I'd like to have slightly better brakes going into Jeddah with those concrete walls. Uh, and then from that point on, I just start doing normal development time again. But yeah, I've started rushing that suspension because, say, if you start it on day one, when you first get started, you'll get it in time for Jeddah if you rush it. The trouble is with rushing is that you don't get as much expertise gain, so um, it does hamper further development uh, because you don't have quite as much expertise as if you were to do it at a normal time frame going forward. But you know, over time, with normal development, normal development time, you will kind of you know get back to where you were, kind of thing. How's the balance? 96% we actually went down a little bit with Vesti there uh, but 95 is an improvement for Felipe so we've made some improvements uh, in in one way and we've a slight loss in the other but we haven't broken the car which is the important thing uh, we can just make a, a little correction here and there I would say, Anthony, the most important thing, especially if they're weak, is brakes. You know, focus on your brake cooling um, before you start focusing on removing drag. Because if your car gets really fast, really quick, and your brakes are still terrible, you're going to have some big lockups and some big crashes. Whereas if you've got good brakes, then your, your drivers will be better able to cope with that increase in speed. Um, and they'll be less likely to make mistakes. They'll still make mistakes, but not as often. I 
Okay, so we went to a four last time and that didn't work. So let's go the other way this time. Let's go to a three and counter correct that way like that. See if that works this one. Uh, we're going to go with hard tires. We're going to go for, let's see, a... Hmm. I'm going to go with a 22 lap run for Freddy. He had that big lockup which lost him a little bit of development on his uh, track knowledge. So we'll put an extra couple of laps of fuel in his car. Uh, and then for Felipe, we're going to go just 20 laps. Uh, what change do I need to make here? Okay, uh, let's try... Try 2.5. I'm going to go to a 3.4 and I'm going to go to a 0.5. And I think that might be it. Drivers are set. Car in the wall. Someone else has crashed. I think that Get might a be a, uh, a Mercedes. Okay, it is, it's Hamilton. I can hear now, Farah screaming with joy. Here. Oh, I can't just missed that Williams. There. That's very unfortunate. Verstappen with a spin. Let's take a closer look. Now here we see Max Verstappen. Someone's gone wide there. Is Russell on the track right now? I think he is. Now oh, he's stuck up behind the T field. I was wondering why his, his pace is really slow. What's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? 96. We're still not there. It was a horrible feeling. It didn't actually make the ch save the changes that I made. How does it feel? And we got to I 97 with Felipe. We're wide. close with both cars. I'm just going to let them finish their runs. I might even extend Vesti's run by an extra lap when it's finished. 
just take a little bit of the uh, the pressure of uh, of session three off if it's going to be wet. I'm looking at the times. That Red Bull was looking mighty fast, as is the Ferraris. Look at the gap. It's almost a second from Sainz to Alonso. Those two are going to be, those two teams are going to be in a, in a class of their own in this Grand Prix. Ah, oh, so now crashing again. Now. now look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. That's two sessions in a row. There's the crash. At least that was a very low impact crash. Not like the first one. There's been a crash. Right. Sounds like a single car. Let's take a look at the setups. Yeah, again, look, it didn't save the change. That's annoying. Did save it on this one. I was still not there. It can't be. It can't be a three, surely. Well, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, let's give that a go. All right, we're going to run those changes in the next session. We're done for today. More crashing. What is going on with the AI here? Sounds like there's been contact. Let's take a look at the replay. Okay, here's the Ferrari. Uh, that's not too bad. It could have been worse, but that'll get him a penalty. So science is going to have a grid drop. Who's running wide there? There we go. Session's over. Today we see. Right. Is it going to rain in this session, or is it going to rain in quali? I hope it's going to rain in quali. Um, if it does. I might not run those new parts on Felipe's car here. I might wait till the next Grand Prix. Because if it does rain here, I've got a real chance of maybe moving up the grid a little bit, depending on how the rain falls. Um, right, we've made the changes already. Let's put on some medium tyres. We're going to go with 22 laps of fuel should be enough. go. Uh, all I need to do is driving options, then I... There we go. Alright, final practice. And yeah, it's going to rain in quali. So, depending on how this rain shakes out in qualifying, if we can get ourselves, you know, 
out of Q1, maybe even into Q3, then we will not be running the parts. If we don't qualify well, then I'll run the new parts and just start a few places further back. But if we can gain a few positions you know, over where we would normally start and, and, uh, and carry that into the race, that sets us up for the possibility of maybe a decent result if things go our way with retirements and safety cars and stuff. Another crash, and that's a Red Bull. We've just had a crash on the track. Perez, he's having a rough weekend. He's been making a few mistakes in practice this weekend. All these teams as well that have had multiple crashes, uh, Alpha Tauri in particular with Sonoda twice hitting the barrier, that's two less front wings for them in this Grand Prix. So if they break a front wing, if Gasly breaks a front wing, for example, that's going to ruin his weekend because he might not have a spare now. Which means he might have to do the rest of the Grand Prix with a broken wing. And on a second like that, that's a death sentence. You know, he's just, you know, he's going to be nowhere. So Rebel have lost at least one. Maybe even, I think Rebel have lost two wings now as well. So again, if something happens to uh, Perez or Verstappen in the race, that could be curtains for them as well. In terms of being competitive. They still might end up beating us, but they certainly won't be challenging for the win. We've just had a car run wide. And we know that Sainz has broken a wing. Ferrari probably got one spare one. There we go. We finally hit 100 with uh, with Freddy. Just needing to run a little bit longer for the bonus points. What do you think? 95 with Felipe. We've gone backwards. Okay, well, I'm not going to run him again. Um, so we'll just revert back to the 97, maybe see if we can tweak it in a different direction, if it is clear which way we need to go. So that's 30 minutes of running. Let's call him in. He's got his points now. Same for Freddy. Yeah, we're breaking too much stuff. Okay, let's go back to the 97. And we'll leave it at that. Because that will get him a 15 out of 15 bonus. And that's the important thing. You know, we don't need to chase blindly after a perfect 100 setup. Because it's not going to make any real difference. You can see he's still going to get that 15 out of 15 performance bonus. That's that's what matters. Not that extra 3% on his setup. All we'd be doing is just putting extra unnecessary hours on the car and still not necessarily getting crash. the perfect setup. All right, a crash from Magnussen. This is good. Lots of uh, teams breaking their front wings. I'm surprised we haven't broken one yet, if I'm honest. That's why I made sure we had an extra two spares going into this Grand Prix. I figured if we were going to lose one, <laughs> or, or, or multiple, it would be here. Of course, there's still the race to come, but... We shall see. Sounds like a spin! 
again there's that big golf look almost a second between Sainz and the rest of the field Perez hasn't gone back out I, re I wonder if they really have broken all of their, their spare front wings and that's why he's not back out Maybe they don't have a part to put on the car. Right, uh, so in terms of penalties for the race, uh, we know Science is going to have that penalty for the collision that he caused. But he's the only one so far. Uh, we may possibly be taking a penalty ourselves. So let's slap on some better parts for Quali. Forty-nine should be okay, and a better gearbox. Fifty-five, that will be fine, and a ninety, that'll be perfect. Uh, evening, Mr. Walter. Good to see you. You missed a bit of fun right at the very beginning of the stream. Everyone missed it, really, because I was muted. Uh, we had the sex bots turn up, and uh, I went to uh, remove them and accidentally made them a moderator. <laughs> very quickly undid that. Um, so you nearly got uh, joined with your blue spanner with uh, some... Yeah, with some sex bots. Alright, the weather's going to change almost immediately, so I'm sending both guys straight out. So, yeah, this is our chance to get out of Q1. It's already gone very grey. This rain is just moments away. I don't want it to start falling until we cross the line at the end of our fast lap. Or just before we cross the line. Okay, we've got two more cars on track. One of the Alfa Tauris and one of the Williams. And one of the Ferraris is coming out now. mistakes please boys nice clean run doesn't have to be amazing just this have to be just needs to be clean and that will be enough Two minutes till the rain hits, according to the radar. And 
Felipe is the faster of the two, as expected. I wonder how heavy this rain's going to be. It might go full wets. I don't think it will. I think it'll be uh, into range. But it does suggest, you know, that we're going to get full wet weather in Q2 or maybe Q3. I think we're definitely going to make Q2. It's just a question of whether we can capitalise on changing conditions and get into Q3 as well. That would be incredible. To get a, a, a qualifying result like that and a circuit here, which is so completely against how our car's set up. We are built for low speed performance. Not by design, it's just how the car is, but... There we go. First and second. Enjoy that while it lasts. And now I want that rain to start falling. Right now. While we're pootling back to the garage. Thank you. <laughs> As if on command. And you can see where the rest of the field is. There is a small sprinkling of rain. My heart froze for a second then because I just pressed the touchpad and thought, oh crap, please don't lock up my game. And no, we're still going. But I'm looking to see who's on hot laps at the moment. And that's it. Everyone else is screwed. We might finish first and second in this, in this session here. Right, let's speed time up. We're the only ones who managed to get a dry run. Everyone else had, has had weather to deal with. So, who's going to be the casualties? If it goes to full wets, which it's on the verge of doing, then you have to say the likes of Albon, Bottas, Ocon, Russell, they're probably safe. And it's everyone else who's going to be, you know, at risk. Does look like Inters are going to be the way to go. I can't believe we're not just getting through, but we're topping the session. Track is starting to dry up. Everyone's going to be in inters. That's it. Rain has stopped. Are we going to have uh, changeable conditions in the next session as well, or was that it for the rain? Ideally, we want the same again in the next session. Start dry and very quickly get wet. So we can get into Q3. I was about to say no big name casualties, but then immediately we get one. Russell is out. Russell unable to get clean air. Comes in 16th place. So Albon wasn't safe. I honestly thought he'd be safe. He didn't get through. That's a shock. 
So, uh, yeah. Interesting result there. Both Williams are out. Both McLarens are out. That is excellent for us. If we can sneak a point uh, in this Grand Prix, <clears throat> we can retake eighth place at McLaren's expense here. Uh, Russell in 16th. That's going to be a bit of a shock. He will probably fight his way through a bit during the race, but it's only half a second off Lewis. How much extra pace has he actually got? Let's go into Q2. We're starting on slicks. I'm going to go with the scrub tyres because if it's going to rain at the beginning again, it doesn't matter whether we're on brand new or, or scrubbed. But if it doesn't, I want a set of brand new slicks at the end. Radio check. Radio check. Uh, it's going to be dry, damn it. Radio check. So this might be it then. Uh, it might be 15th, 14th and 15th for us. So now I have to decide whether or not I want to accept that. Or whether I want to take the penalty for Felipe for the race. Let's uh, speed up until we get to uh, start the the the, uh, the hot lap. coming out in front of us, don't get in the way. I think we got away with that. I am worried about our pace difference to Haas in this Grand Prix. Last thing I need is for them to build on their point haul from the last race and uh, start stretching that gap. I mean, I'm, we're in a battle with, Mc, with McLaren. We're only two points off them, but I don't want to leave it just to, to chance on that one thing because they just need one good result. Uh, uh, from, from Norris and he can easily get himself into the top 10 Hi there William cheering on Felipe I see How far off the pace are we? Seven tenths, nearly a second with Felipe. We are on scrubs though. We do have uh, new, uh, new soft tires for our second run. the field go through. I 
There we go. And let's send both our cars out at the same time so we can try and get a slipstream with one of them. I think Felipe's got more pace, so I'll leave him at the front. I think the dirty air might have held him up a little bit in the last one. We'll see. Uh, let's tell Freddy not to fight. And let's see if we can jump up a little bit. Oh, we've got a yellow flag. Who has messed up? It's one of the Alpha Tauri, uh, one of the Alpha Romeos. Yellow flag. It's Bottas. Here's the replay. Now we see Valtteri Bottas. So that doesn't just hurt Bottas's time. And that spin but that is, is going to hurt other cars Boston as well. Time. The team had such high... Oh no, wait, this is the outlap. So it's not going to hurt them. Ah, damn it. And it would have been perfect if that was the hot lap. Because that would have screwed up Bottas's lap and everyone else behind him as well. Alonso is definitely going to improve. So we are staring down the barrel of a very distant the 14th and 15th here. I think. I think I might put those parts into Felipe's car for the race. Oh, we've had a spin. Sounds like we've had a spin. Let's take a closer look. Now just focus on the hats. They lose it there. That's the spin. That's going to affect everybody behind him. And it'll be clear by the time we get there. I think it's not made a difference to his time. I don't think we can make up seven, eight tenths of a second. No, two tenths. It wasn't enough. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put the new parts in. Race day has arrived and the time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. There was some good work from Aston Martin during the qualifying session, and they will go to the grid full of confidence. This hasn't been McLaren's weekend so far, and they'll probably be disappointed with their grid positions. But after the lights go out, they'll have every opportunity to move up the field. And the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the teams should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. Well, this may well be another Belgian Grand Prix for the ages. So stick around and find out how it all ends. So, uh, new engine. Oops. There we go. And a new ERS module. That will drop him to the back of the grid but we'll give him a little bit of a pace advantage. And we've still got Freddy um, starting 14th now, uh, so that'll be good. Uh, in terms of strategy, I might... I might two-stop this.
that seems to be the optimal for a two stop that's faster that's much faster all right one stop it is then Take a lap of fuel out. And off we go. As the sun continues to shine, it seems like nothing can dampen the mood of excitement here at the track. Aston Martin there. With their starting position in the back ten, they'll have their work cut out for them. There's the second Aston Martin. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The race start is mere seconds away. Get ready, it's the Belgian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. And yeah, we're off. All right, let's see how well we can do. We have got to get through those Williams cars very quickly. We also want to make sure that Freddy doesn't drop a position right at the beginning. Got to watch out for Russell coming through from the back. I have no idea what our pace is going to be in this race. We never really found out in Q1 because of the rain. And in Q2, we were way off the pace. Use overtake. Copy. one you're in a good place use energy if you need mistake from the McLaren there. Oh, he is on softs. That's going to be tricky. Energy if you need it. Let's take a look at the tyres of the rest of the grid. So, a few on mediums, but half the grid's on softs. I wonder if they're two stopping. Those soft runners, or if they're going to go soft hard, and the rest are going to go medium hard like us. Let's see, uh, Schumacher ahead of us on the mediums. I don't think we're going to be able to get past Ricardo at the moment. I mean, being on those softs, we might have to wait for him to get past Albon. Uh, Vesti is uh, potentially dropping off the back of Schumacher. 
Copy. Let's try and close those gaps up a bit. Oh, we got a big crash. That's a safety car. It's a collision. Let's see what happened there. Okay. I so saw a puff of smoke and I heard lobby. the impact. Oh, oh no! And there's the crash. Oh, that's an Alpha Tauri out. Mark my words, there'll be questions asked about that later. I don't know about that's the Alpine. Going to be a big blow to the team. Will they be able to recover? We'll see. So yes, yeah, Sonoda's out. Alonso uh, took some big damage there. Car in the wall. No front wing at all on that car. Point we're doing something very unusual here. I'm going to pause for a second, talk you through what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, and I know this is dangerous, um, of converting to a two stop, but I was toying with the idea of going onto the hard tyres and then in, uh, off the hard tyres onto mediums. Sorry, off these mediums onto hard tyres and then immediately pit the next lap to go back onto mediums and then just do a medium medium to the end so that would make that technically a three stop depends how long the safety car stays out uh, one thing I also want to have a look at is could I now look at going soft soft to the end I don't know whether or not that would be viable No, it wouldn't. Just about squeeze soft medium, but those tyres would be mud by the end. Uh, we'll just stay as we are. I think. I don't think the safety car is going to stay out long enough to uh, swap onto hards and then swap back onto mediums again to do a medium medium finish. Because the field's still all bunched up. Even with Alonso. Got loads of energy having to pit. Energy's good. He'll catch up to the field again pretty quickly. We'll just stick with what we've got. I think that's the best option. Had this been later in the race, you know, and the field had spread out a bit more, uh, then it's, it's something I would have put a lot more thought into because... The safety car would take longer for the train to form up because the field was more scattered. It would give me maybe more time to get back around and switch back again. But this early in the race, it's just, yeah, we might do one lap behind the safety car here. But had we started on the hard tyres, then I would have immediately switched to mediums and gone medium, medium. I certainly don't want to be running hard this early in the Grand Prix when everyone else is on mediums or softs because our pace would be nowhere and we just get left behind. Need to be on fast tyres to stay with the pack as long as possible.
What size did Alonso go on to? He's gone on to hards. Ooh, interesting. I wonder. I might risk that with Felipe. Not with Vesti. I'm keeping track position with Vesti, but I might switch onto that strategy with Felipe if the safety car... Oh, no, it's ending. If the safety car was staying out another lap, then I would have probably risked that strategy with Felipe. Alonso joining the back of the pack. Everyone's all back together again. So there is no overtaking until the control line, and there'll be two laps with no DRS. Yeah, perfect. Happy to push. Perfect. No saving required. Okay. So use energy. Okay. You can stop lift and coast. Again, I'm not going to push too hard with Felipe just yet because he's got to chase down someone on soft tyres. It's going to have a traction disadvantage in every single corner on top of the fact that our car is terrible in the high-speed corners. But I might be able to capitalise on Schumacher here. Need a good run through this corner. And that wasn't it. Got the low speed cost stuff coming up here. This is where our car's at its best. These next two corners. Yeah, we just don't have the launch. Okay, so just lift and coast. Yeah, copy.
Fred is actually struggling to stay with the cars in front. Use energy if you need it, use energy. All right, so Ricardo should get past Albon here. If we can get past Albon quickly as well, we can try and follow Ricardo back onto Russell, but that's going to be a tall order. And Vesti just does not have the pace to stay with uh, Schumacher and Joe right now. So we'll save what little battery we've got left there, I think. All right, Ricardo's through. You see Ricardo's absolutely flying now, he's got three. That's his second already. See if we can get a good launch. If we can get side by side going up to the DRS line, we might actually get the DRS. That was it. And we get a head coming through Radion, which means we get a nice clean run with the flap open. That's perfect. Good job. All right, so now we're going to try, if we can, and get back onto Ricardo. That's going to be a really tough Aston thing to do. With a great play there. They've moved up a place. Vesti is holding up the cars in front. He can keep his position. Until those softs start to go off a little bit. That will be huge for us. And it will also help Felipe to catch up as well. Wow, wow, Alonso just scything through. He's on hard tyres, but that car is so much faster than ours. He's all over the back of us already. Just look how much faster he is. It's crazy. Ooh, yellow flag in sector one. Single yellow. Magnuson yeah, spins. Excellent. That's uh, one of the horses uh, dropped down the order. Has promoted Schumacher into the points, but we're now just off the points ourselves. If 
fortunately we're a second slow. <laughs> Save fuel. Yep. We haven't quite got enough pace to actually catch Ricardo, so I'd rather not completely empty the battery and burn out our tyres. If he gets held up behind Norris and Russell, who are being held up behind Vesti, we'll catch him anyway. It'll just take a little bit longer. Plus, we've got to try and hold off Alonso here, and that's going to be very very hard to do might be better to just let Alonso through which is going to happen by the look of it now oh, we're holding him back Alright, let's um, skip ahead to Freddy. Let's keep an eye on his progress here. He's doing well. Evening, Jeremy. Russell swarming all over the back of Norris here is definitely helping Freddy out. Norris can't attack when he's having to defend. It's giving us uh, little windows where we can just breathe and makes defense that a little bit easier. So still not getting past. big surprise for me at the moment is just how little a gap the uh, Ferraris and Red Bulls are pulled to the rest of the field. The pace that we saw in qualifying and in practice just isn't there right now. I suppose it is for Leclerc and Verstappen, not so much for Perez and Sainz. Oh, 
someone's gone wide. Uh, that was Freddy. Uh, let's put him under pressure. They've gone wide! We can take a look now. So this was the Aston Martin. A little bit of a corner cut there. Alonso is still not past Felipe. He's doing a good job defending there as well, but it does mean that he's not able to push onto the back of Ricardo, and I don't have the battery left to try and push him up that way. I don't want to over push on fuel, and I certainly don't want to burn the tyres out too early. So we're just kind of stuck in limbo right now. We either need to slow Freddy down, which is a risk and try and back the pack up a little bit or Felipe needs to let Alonso through and then uh, use you know use him as a bridge to try and close the gap that way and Sainz is in so is Gasly so we've got our first pit stops and Hamilton as well so the soft tyre runners are starting to pit and that's hard oh and he gets held for Gasly Gasly also goes on to hards. Joe's in. Hamilton's already made his tyre stop. He's on hards as well. Got to imagine Joe's going on to hard tyres. He is. And Norris has pits. And Magnussen from the back of the grid is also pitting. Interesting. So... Uh, let's have a look at the lap times that they've been doing. Uh, so it's not Leclerc, it's Sainz who was just pitted, isn't it? So he was doing 148s. It's tricky because of these yellow flags that know their true pace, but we'll see what he does uh, after a clean lap on hard tyres. See whether his pace is picking up. We're currently sitting in eighth right now, which is really nice. <laughs> Not going to lie on that one. But it is a temporary, a temporary eighth. We're not staying here. Meanwhile, Felipe is uh, now going to be joined in this battle with Alonso by Hamilton on brand new tyres. Well, we knew that was going to happen, so uh, now we just got to see if we can stay with him. But, you know, with Hamilton putting us under pressure like this, that's going to be tricky. Uh, and there we go, we're already a second behind.
Uh, more pit stops. Russell Pitts. That'll relieve a little bit of the pressure behind us. Potentially. Oh, Gasly nearly hitting us there. He's trying to find a way through. He's going to get past us this lap, I think. Now we're blocking through our rouge. Block him on the camel straight as well. Our boys are certainly earning their pay tonight. This is great stuff from Freddy. to the pit window the tire wear is better than predicted because of that uh, safety car we could potentially stretch a little bit Look at the replay. Now let's watch this. The Alfa Romeo involved in this one. Goodness me! How did he not hit the wall there? Right, let's take a look at Slice's lap times now that he's uh, had some time on those new tyres. And he is quicker. Okay, with Ricardo pitting, do I try and overcut or do I come in early? I think really 
I've got to try and stretch these mediums a little bit. I don't think pitting now is going to help us against Ricardo at the very least. Um, Schumacher's still doing well. He's still running in fifth. to finally get through but we'll get DRS now so that might not be a bad thing it's a race position gained for Mercedes This is going to be a tall order, but if we can stay with Hamels in front of the lap. Energy if you need it. Over. No, no, Farrah. with them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to bring Felipe in this lap. Box, box. Yeah, copy box. Good lane. Hey, firm. No, who behind us still needs to pit? Um, well, nobody. <laughs> the only ones still to pit are Freddie and Leclerc. Is that a lockup? All right, we are six seconds off Ricardo. Let's see if we can actually close that gap at all. Magnussen did have that earlier stop, so his tyres are a little bit more worn. And that's Leclerc into the pits. So, uh, Freddie's the last one. And we're going to keep him out as long as we can now. So we're going to stretch this at least another two laps. or until we start getting swamped. this does give us the potential now to go on to a set of softs instead of hards for Freddy. 
if we can keep him out and keep him holding track position, he's going to slow everybody down. It will benefit Felipe. And then we can go really aggressive with some soft tyres. And try and make some positions back up again. It's a risky strategy, but... I don't think we've got much other choice if we want to try and get a good result here. Just need Vesti to keep doing what he's doing. He's putting in a fantastic drive tonight. Gasly. So use energy if you need it. Can I get back in front? Don't have the pace. I could just about stay with him with DRS there. I couldn't even close him. So Gasly's gone, but we'll keep going. But we might be hitting that threshold now where we just can't keep the pace up with these tyres anymore. Still too early for softs. Let's have a look at uh, lap times. Drogovic not closing on Ricardo. Lapping about the same as Norris. There's a big gap to some of the cars in front, but we are lapping faster than Schumacher, uh, than Hamilton. Alonso and obviously Ocon and Vesti. So he is closing them down a little bit. What is the actual gap? It's what, 16 seconds at the moment. 16 and a half seconds. 
So Vesti's going to come out behind Freddy at this point. I'm really impressed with how well vesti has been able to defend here. What lap would I need to go to to go on to uh, a set of softs? Lap 27. We're close. We're close to that point. Ocon is swarming all over the back of us here, but we are holding him back for now. Oh, is this the pass? It is. Okay, well, he held him up for a long time. We're going to keep going with this strategy. We definitely want to hold up Alonso. Because he's probably going to have to pit again. He made that early start after he broke his uh, front wing, taking out Sonoda. So he's going to make a, a late stop for softs. We definitely want to hold him back. Ready. Keep those heroics going. Just a couple more laps.
Drogovic just 12 and a half seconds behind now. queue of cars starting to form Alonso, Joe, Hamilton, Schumacher, Bottas, Magnussen, Russell, Norris, Ricardo, and there is Felipe he is definitely closing the gap to his teammate maybe not so much to the others but that will naturally come down a bit So I got through. That's a good overtake from Alpine. Oh, that's a shame. Have a look. Okay, so there we have the LP. Oh, a nasty crash there. Okay, how bad is the damage to Ocon's car? It's not good. It's not good. Missing half a wing is going to do a whole lap like that. It's not affecting his pace as much as I thought it would. I mean, it, it's suffering a little bit through some of these corners. Alonso is now starting to close him down, but I thought he'd be slower than he's going right now. into the pits we might possibly be able to jump in here copy that 
So use pit limiter, pit limiter. We're not okay on fuel. Right, fuel will be an issue if we're not careful. I'm hoping we can save a bit without having to conserve. And then we can conserve in the last lap or two if we need to. Felipe. Oh, and that's a crash. Here's the replay. So this was the Aston Martin. Oh, it's been so good all weekend. Here's the crash. The team are really disappointed with that. Let's hope it doesn't set them back too badly. And now we're in the same boat as Ocon. It's just the front wing though. No chassis, no uh, suspension, so that's good. But we are going to need to change that front wing. Box, box. At least I didn't damage the powertrain components. Was, uh, an end to what has been a promising race. Only thing now that will really be a silver lining will be a late safety car. Copy that. Fresh set of tyres. Go on the attack. Maybe steal a couple of places, but yeah, we're um, we're kind of screwed now. This is how I thought this race was going to go, to be honest, anyway. So, we performed above expectations for a long time, but you know, now we're, we're, we're pretty much where I thought we'd be, unfortunately. I 
And we're about to get lapped. Maybe we'll have some pace on these new tyres, but I don't think it'll be enough to stay ahead of uh, Verstappen. Yellow flag 15, yellow 15. Okay, copy. We don't have to worry about fuel with Felipe. Vesti might be another matter. What's our pace like at the moment? I was going to say we're lapping a lot faster than Norris, but Ocon, but that's because he's being held up by Norris. What's going on with Norris? so slow. Did he make a mistake that I missed? We are actually lapping faster than pretty much everybody in front of us up to and including Joe. Maybe it's not all over for Freddy yet. Maybe there's still something to get from this race. Felipe is just floundering right now. Let's see what he can do across the line.
1.478. Okay, so we've got about a second and a half a lap on Latifi. And about a second and a lap on Albon. Um, we'll get Latifi. Might not get Albon. He might be a bit too far ahead. Schumacher is in the points. That is a problem. I need Russell to uh, do me a solid here. even worse <laughs> she is in, improved up to 8th that's terrible alright I need Russell and Bottas to do me a favour now Two and a half seconds to this fight in front of us. We are closing. And Ocon is through. Right. I'm going to see his pace pick up again. Uh, Alonso still needs to pit. That's going to drop him down. He is currently 18 seconds ahead. He might get out in front of us. He doing that wise he's doing 148 ones he's doing the same pace as us yeah so i don't think we're gonna get along so even if we did he'd come out so close behind us he'd be past us almost immediately so our fight is not with him oh hello that's a ferrari off that's science someone's locked up let's take a closer look let's have another look science is the focus here well they've lost it they've locked up he kept it out the wall but only just we're not okay on fuel Right, Norris can't keep pace with Ocon, that's good, that's important. You know, if he could and get the DRS, we would never catch him. Now we've got a chance. I don't know if we can get any higher than that though. I think 15th might be the best we can achieve. I'll take it. It'll get us uh, sponsorship money. One of our uh, incentives is to get one in the top 15. Push 
push a little bit of battery while we've uh, got a tyre advantage. Still hoping for a late safety car. Yeah, feel like Pippin from Lord of the Rings. We've had one safety car, yes, but what about second safety car? <laughs> Albon is too far ahead, we're not catching him with Drogovic, but we will catch uh, Latifi. We're only five seconds off him now. A second a lap doesn't mean anything when we are 20 seconds behind with only eight laps to go. starting to give out on Freddy's car as well. That momentum we had, it's starting to dip. The biggest gains we make are in the first, you know, the first and last corners. That, that starting straight is basically where we have a big advantage. And everywhere else, we just lose ground. Can we get the DRS? I'm almost out of battery. This is my last chance to get it. And I don't think we are going to get it. Oh, maybe, maybe. Not quite. So close. just in front of Latifi. 
I don't think I'd have enough time to catch Albon. I'd need to be doing two seconds a lap more than he's doing, which I'm not. I've got to push the tyres, just hope. We just need to push now. Still losing ground, look. I've just got nothing left to fight with. That's Alonso in the pits. He's got to be a favourite now for fastest lap. Maybe I can get DRS off the back of Alonso. No, he's already out ahead of Norris. I still haven't caught a Tifi. Oh, there we go. Now oh, we got him. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Okay, copy. This is good. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Pace has just disappeared over the last couple of laps. Pushing the tyres harder than they like. I'm going to calm them down again. Let's just get the car across the line now. Drop back a bit. Yeah, copy. The one chance I've got left now. We just need to charge up. Is Verstappen lapping us? If he laps us and Norris, we've got a chance to try and follow him through. So I'm trying to pull a little bit more battery back in the car, just in case that opportunity presents itself. Happy to push.
There's Verstappen. I don't think he's going to get us both in two laps. I think he'll get me, but I don't think he'll get Norris. Let's see, he's lapping two and a half seconds faster. Yeah, he's only going to get me, he's not going to get Norris. Actually, maybe, maybe. Right at the death. But I'm going to be vulnerable to Leclerc as well. Pushing now. DRS, that was important. This is it, final lap. So this is last lap, this is last lap. Yeah, copy. Use everything from the tyres, use everything. Yeah, copy. Stop and close that gap down. Schumacher is going to finish seventh. Ugh. That's six more points for Haas. That's not good. Desperately need that new underfloor. We've still got two races to go until we can get it. And we're about to get lapped by Leclerc. So even if by miracle Norris does get past, we're still screwed. And it was worth a try. We gave it everything we had. And that is that. Okay on fuel, so you can do what you want for speed. Okay. So 16th for Freddy, and then it's going to be 18th for Felipe. That's a bit disappointing considering how well we were doing earlier in the race. I knew this was going to be tough. I thought we might get more out of it than we did based on how we were doing in the first half of the race there. It's a shame. It's also a shame Schumacher managed to get those six points. At least McLaren didn't score. So we do keep the gap constant to them. We do stay within two points of them. And if that new floor is effective as I hope it's going to be. Which I don't think it will be, but you know, if. Uh, then we're in with a chance of picking up some points again. Once, yeah, once it's on the car. So, yeah, 
uh, a difficult race. Um, strong result for Schumacher. Uh, George with a good result as well. Good recovery drive from him. Zio recovering uh, nicely to pick up an extra couple of points as well. Uh, the big disappointments uh, for Yuki obviously being taken out very early by Alonso who never managed to get himself back into the contention. Uh, Magnussen luckily didn't score points as well. That could have been even worse for us. Um, but yeah, disappointing for Freddie. He was doing so well earlier and then just his pace fell away at the end. We did kind of sabotage him a little bit by keeping him out so long on those mediums to try and come back on the soft and slow the pack up into Felipe who then drove into the wall and ruined the strategy that we had uh, tried to cultivate by deliberately sandbagging Vesti a little bit. Uh, so both our drivers lost out as a result of uh, Felipe's crash. Still could be worse. Into the Constructors' Championship you can see those six points now, that's ten points now Haas have over us. I don't think we're going to recover that. I think our fight now for the rest of the season is with McLaren. I don't think we're even even going to stand a chance of getting back ahead of Haas now. Uh, into the Drivers' Championship, you can see that despite the win, Leclerc stays top uh, and is top by 27 points. If my maths is right there. Yeah, 27 points. So he's still got just over a race win in hand, uh, which is nice. Uh, Sainz uh, picks up some good points. Perez closes the gap by three to just 25 between those two now. Um, good points for Lewis, uh, for George. <coughs> Bottas picks up a point. Good finish for Pierre Gasly as well. But no changes in the positioning. Everyone stays where they were. So a decent points haul for Freddie. He gets his extra points. You can see a superb defensive drive. Look at that. 17 successful defenses for him. He really did do a superb job holding those cars up for as long as he did. And not so good for Felipe, but not too far off. A decent you know, haul of points for him. He gets another result like that. You know, around 1,200 points. He'll be getting his next point, I think. Uh, so... Onto our sponsors. Again, the finished position streak. I'm not sure how or why we're getting that money, but we're getting it. Uh, we failed the incentive, which was one in the top 15. We just didn't quite have the legs left on those tyres for Freddie. Uh, and obviously we failed to reach Q3, but we, that was never that was never a, an objective, really. 4.6 mil, though. That's quite nice. Can't really do anything with it, but <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, so the Dutch Grand Prix is next. Uh, oh, we do have a point for Felipe. How did he get another point? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so it's possible then that Freddie might, if he's lucky, get another point after the next Grand Prix. Depends how well he does in Zandvoort. It'll be a little bit kinder to us than Spa, but not much kinder. It is still a circuit that we're going to struggle with is only a couple of low speed corners again a lot of fast flowing sections that's going to hurt us uh, let's have a look at our staff yeah still no points I'm still a way off let's check in with the inbox uh, difficult race the board were disappointed yeah it wasn't a great result were they actually disappointed or were they satisfied they were satisfied. We can we can live with that. That's fine. Uh, still below target, but again, only by two points. We are still in contention to get eighth place. Um, seeing as we've got all this money that we can't spend, let's go ahead and keep the board happy as well. Um, We are close to these dropping, so I'm going to go ahead and drop an upgrade on that. And on the weather sensor, might as well at this point. Uh, tour sensor is fine, we'll leave that for a bit longer. Helipad is fine, leave that for a bit longer. 
Uh, race sim is still fine. No need to worry about that for a while. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, that is the end of another race. Uh, the end of another stream. Thanks for watching. Uh, hasn't been the usual um, lively commentary for myself tonight. Uh, I've made the reasons why known in the actual chat itself. Uh, so um, apologies for that. It's beyond my control. And I will be back with some more challenge mode tomorrow. So uh, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Bob and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager very soon.